untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a red-white warriors deck as my last pre time standard video, so make sure to join the Patreon or become a subscriber on Twitch if you want to help decide which time decks I should tackle first, as well as enjoying other cool perks like being able to join the Discord server, where we also organize weekly tournaments where you can win cards signed by me, as well as getting access to all my up-to-date tier lists for Limited. Speaking of which, I'll be doing another Limited set review on Twitch this Sunday, which I'll Later edits for YouTube as well, so if you want to be part of that and help vote for each card, make sure to follow me on Twitch. But for now we're taking a look at Red White Warriors, which is a tribal deck that also has some equipment synergy. One of the key cards, Cargrim Warleader, a 3-3, that gives other warriors we control plus one plus one, as well as having a ton of equipment synergy with cards like Akiri, Fearless Voyager, that rewards us for attacking with equipped creatures, Core Blade Master giving our equipped creatures double strike, so there's a ton of synergy going on. So let's take a look at the entire deck, starting out with our 1-drops, where we've got the full playset of Fireblade Charger, a 1-1 Goblin Warrior that has haste as long as it's equipped, so even in later turns we can attack with it right away if we have an equipment in play, and when the Charger dies it deals damage equal to its power to any target, so also benefits from getting additional power, whether it's from equipment cards or from cards like Cargon Warleader giving it plus 1 plus 1. Then we also have two copies of Shadow Spear as our first equipment. It is legendary, so we don't want too many in the deck, but two is just about right. Gives the equipped creature plus one plus one, trample and lifelink, and equips for just two mana. Can also remove hexproof and indestructible from opposing cards, which can come up every now and then. Then at two mana, we've got Core Blade Master. This is one of the incentives for playing all these equipment, giving our equipped creatures double strike, as well as just being a one-one double strike by itself. So playing a turn two Blade Master into a turn three War Leader means we get to attack with a two two double strike on turn 3, which represents a lot of damage. Then we also have the full playset of Season Hellablade, a 3-1 Human Warrior that lets us discard a card to tap it and make it indestructible until end of turn, so it makes it a nice recipient of our various equipment, since it's very difficult for the opponent to kill it, so we can safely invest our mana into equipping the Hellablade. Then we also have the full playset of Cargon Intimidator, a 3-1 Human Warrior, saying cowards cannot block warriors, and for 1 mana we can turn an opposing creature into a coward until end of turn, so when be able to block any of our creatures, which are all warriors, and then we can also for one mana give Intimidator plus one plus one until end of turn, or we can give a warrior trample until end of turn, so all very relevant abilities. And then we have two copies of a Relic Axe, which when it enters the battlefield attaches to a creature we control right away, so we don't have to spend mana equipping, and then gives the equipped creature plus one plus one, unless it's a warrior, in which case it gets plus two plus one, so very powerful equipment in a warrior deck. Then at 3 mana, speaking of powerful equipment, we've got two copies of Maul of the Skyclaves, which also equips to a creature right away when we play it, giving it plus 2 plus 2, flying and first strike, and then we can move the equipment for 4 mana afterwards. Then we've got two copies of Akiri Fearless Voyager, a 3 3 legendary core warrior, saying whenever we attack a player with one or more equipped creatures, we get to draw a card, and for a white mana, we can unattach an equipment from a creature we control, and if we do, we have to tap that creature and it gains indestructible until end of turn, so it gives our equipped creatures a pseudo -person protective ability, which makes it very difficult for the opponent to block. And then of course our full playset of Cargon Warleader, as well as two copies of a Winota Joiner Forces. Now this isn't a dedicated Winota deck, we're not trying to cheat anything too busted into play with Winota, but it is a human warrior, and we have a decent mix of humans and non-humans in the deck, since we have a lot of non-human warriors with Charger being a goblin, we've got the Blade Master and Akiri, which are core instead of humans, and then of course a lot of humans we can hit as well. So Winota just fits in nicely, but we're not playing a ton of copies, just two of them as well as two copies of Nahiri, Heir of the Ancients, which is incredibly synergistic in our deck. For loyalty, can plus one to make a 1-1 one -one core warrior creature token that lets us attach an equipment we control to it for free. Then the minus two lets us get a bit of card advantage by taking a look at the top six cards to reveal an equipment or warrior card, so very high chance of hitting something. And then the minus three gives us access to a bit of removal, dealing twice the amount of damage equal to the number of equipment we control to a creature or planeswalker. Then we also have two copies of Legion Angel with two more copies in the sideboard we can search up. It's a 4-3 flyer that's also an Angel Warrior, and when a Legion Angel enters the battlefield we can reveal a card we own named Legion Angel from outside the game and put it into our hand. So the first Legion Angel will find a second in the sideboard which will find a third, so it can provide a steady stream of 4-3 flying warriors. 
And then last but not least, two copies of Embercleave as a powerful equipment that we can play at a reduced cost if we have more attacking creatures in play, giving the equipped creature plus one plus one, a double strike and trample, so a very lethal equipment indeed. And then going over the mana base, we've got some dual-faced cards here with Kazul's Fury, which we can play as a tap land or as a three mana instant, which as an additional cost we need to sacrifice a creature and then it deals damage equal to the sacrifice creature's power to any target. So this is very synergistic with our Fireblade Charger, especially if it's equipped or has additional power from somewhere else, as well we get to deal the damage from the Charger dying as well as from Kazul's Fury, which can give us a ton of reach to close out the game. And then we've got two copies of Shatter Skull, the Hammer Pass, which can be a land untapped at a cost of three life, or a powerful removal spell if we've got access to a ton of mana in the late game. And then the rest of our mana base, four of the red-white pathway, six mountains, and ten basic planes. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, with what looks like a reasonable hand. Facing the blue-black mill deck. And we'll just play the spear here. At least our three powered creatures line up favorably against the Ruin Crab, so we can attack into it. Although two of them it means our opponent's off to a pretty good start in terms of milling us. And a Merfolk Wind Robber. So which two drop do I want to play here? So we haven't seen any black mana yet, but I assume my point is blue-black. So Hellblade's a little bit of a safer investment, I would say, than Intimidator. So next turn we can play Akiri. And then on turn 4, equip Spear plus play Intimidator, maybe. So I'm not too concerned with the damage race, since we've got Shadow Spear with Life Link, But we could potentially get milled out before we deal 20 damage here. Nahiri could be nice, too. So yeah, I think for now, just attack, play Akiri. And we'll see if they have removal for Akiri. So we're already halfway. Opponent's got two cards in hand. Thirst kicked kills Akiri. And we take five. Alright, so... Still seems like a good turn for Intimidator plus Equip Shadow Spear. Ooh, we know Ta. So now the idea of Nahiri make a warrior token becomes a bit more appealing. She wouldn't die to the two rogues attacking. She would still be at one. And then next turn I could play Winota and get a trigger of the non-human attacking. Yeah, I don't hate that idea. Plus we get to equip Shadow Spear for free, which feels good. So we'll hit. Alright, so hopefully no second Thought Thief. That way we get to keep Nahiri in play for an extra turn. And if my opponent's attacking, they shouldn't have too many good blockers for the token here. Right, another Wind Robber, that's fine. So Nahiri takes four. 
and hopefully Winota gives us some goodies. My reckoning will come one day. 23 cards remain. Ooh, Blade Master could be good too. It is another non-human for Winota. So what if we wait a turn on Winota and just play Blade Master? Play Intimidator. I can turn Windrobber into a coward so they can chump and sacrifice. Attack, get to gain four. And then we can still plus Nahiri and move the equipment. And then next turn we know that should be great. Opponent actually sacrifices Windrobber. I guess next turn they can play Lurus and replay it. Now I don't really want to discard Winota to save Hello Blade, but our opponent doesn't know that. Might as well move Shadow Spear on defense. Alright, so we'll see. Opponent's at 7, we're at 12. 22 minus 6 means 16 cards remain here. So, yeah, close game. Lurus is going to be annoying, being able to get back creatures from the graveyard. But we might be able to kill them next turn. Thirst kills Intimidator. At least they're killing a human and not a non-human here. So Nahiri is going to fall. Nope, opponent ignores Nahiri. So we're left with 13 cards. So the fact that Winota puts creatures in play also reduces the number of cards in our library, which could be a bad thing, but probably still going to go for it. Nahiri can quite deal damage. That's a minus three, so probably just going to make another token. But yeah, I think we play Winota and then we'll see what happens. Attack. I could not attack with the 1-1 one, one, since Lurs gets to eat it for free. But I think I'm still going to go for it, plus we could hit a war leader. Of course, if I had the untapped overlay turned on, which you can download with the link in the description, I would know right away whether I had a copy left. Yeah, I still have one war leader left, which would be a great hit. And there it is. Intimidator. And I guess if I go full control here, I can still use the Intimidator's ability before my opponent gets a chance to block. So, uh, how many creatures are attacking? Opponent's got four blockers, I can remove one. I've got a lot of damage coming across. Do I want to prevent Lurus from blocking? I think so. So, becomes a coward. And we were pretty much guaranteed to hit War Leader since we were going to look at our entire library here with Winota's ability. So opponent gets three blocks, but yeah, they're still taking lethal here. So very close game against rogues. But the last second we nota saves the day. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Don't actually hate this hand. We can play a tapped fury, turn to Hellblade, hopefully draw a third land that's untapped. And if not, we can still equip Relic Axe to Hellblade and then play Akiri, facing a Yurion deck. Yeah, we'll try it. So I'll skip out on the turn one charger 
to make sure we can play turn two Hellblade. And then next turn, got a few options. Typically better to play Akiri if we can draw a card in the same turn, which means maybe going Charger, equip Charger with Relic Axe next turn so we can attack with a hasty Charger and then Akiri the turn after. Also want to make sure we don't overextend into something like Extinction Events. Yeah, I think I like Charger Axe. And then do I want double white, double red? I guess double white in case of Legion Angel. Could see removal on Charger in response. Which would be too bad, but then they don't get to use Tome at least. Alright. So now the Akiri plan's not looking as exciting. Serpent's just gonna scry. And migration path for ramp. Serpent's going big. And we don't have the fastest start here. So, what's the play? Cost 2 mana to equip Axe. So I suppose I could equip Axe, play Intimidator, and then next turn play Akiri. Yeah, that doesn't sound too bad, although it does line up poorly against Extinction Events. Whereas playing a War Leader and then just playing a Tapped Fury might be slightly better. And then next turn I can play land, equip and play Akiri for 5 total and still draw a card potentially. Yeah, let's do that instead. But our opponent might cast something big and scary here. Opponent's gonna cash in Maze Mind Tomes, so they're not planning on flickering it with Yurion at least. And gains for life as well. And Elspeth's Nightmare doesn't kill anything, so could have been worse. Alright, so I think we continue with our Akiri plan, and I should probably equip Hollow Blade, which is just a safer investment. And hope to not draw into a non-creature spell here. Cling to dust to gain three. All right, land is fine. All right, so opponent's got seven mana now. They could have something like emergent ultimatum, which could be pretty scary. And yeah, there it is. So we'll see what they get. I'm assuming one of them is going to be a sweeper. Alright, so two big fighting creatures and a Kira best sea god. Yeah, that's gonna be difficult to overcome. So if we get the two fighters, then I get to keep my Hollow Blade, which is gonna be five powered. I can use Intimidator to prevent the opponent from blocking. But it's still gonna be tough. If I give them Kirabas a Sea God, I can't target it with the Intimidator. It's probably going to be more annoying, although Kogla destroying my equipment is also bad. So yeah, this is just kind of rough. Guess we can go for the two creatures, which we can maybe get past with Intimidator. But I'm not loving my chances here. Mammoth fights War Leader. At least they won't be able to fight with Mammoth a second time without losing it. So 
So this is Quagla fighting Akiri, which happens. And Mammoth doesn't fight. Shatter Skull smashing. Can't quite do it for enough here. But uh, I guess we'll save it in hand. So for now, I can play both Intimidators and prevent both creatures from blocking. Hit them for five. Is that to play? Next turn, Yorion's going to be kind of rough too, because they get to flicker the fighting creatures and just kill both Intimidators. So maybe the plan should just be to use Smashing to clear the creatures before we commit more to the board. And then for now, what's the plan here? Just do nothing, play a land and pass. I'll still need two additional lands before I can smash in for six, so that's gonna take forever. Yeah, I don't really see a great line. I guess I could attack if they block smashing to finish off one of the creatures. Although it's not gonna be pretty. Mammoth blocks. Make it indestructible, discarding land. And then smashing for one. And then I probably still don't want to play Intimidator because of the Yurion play. We're gonna lose our Relic Axe. And there's Yurion. Maybe I don't even care about Hellblade at this point and both Intimidators are just better. That way I can turn both blockers into cowards potentially. Charger can chum block if needed. But I guess the Crawling Barons is also going to make things difficult. So yeah, we had a reasonable start, although opponent had some good early removal to not get run over all the way, and then Emergent Ultimatum closed the door very quickly. Kogla attacks, we can take 11. Is there any way I can kill my opponent here? They can still gain 3 with Cling to Dust, which they can escape. Um, so I need to deal 12 damage. I guess Ember Cleave would be uh, just good enough here. So I guess I'll take it. So yeah, Ember Cleave could still win this game, since we get to play Ember Cleave and Pump with Intimidator instead of Legion Angel. But yeah, it's crazy to think that even being so far behind, an Amber Cleef top deck could have still done it. So now, how do we survive? Yeah, I think the game's over now. But yeah, just goes to show that you should never give up before it's actually over. They can animate Crawling Barons, forcing us to double chump. So yeah, I think now the game's actually over. Let's make some reasonable blocks so I don't feel too bad. Alright, GG's.
on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a reasonable hand, could use some equipment, but for now we're just kind of a creature aggro deck. If that gets to curve out and smash. Opponent also on red-white. It's gonna exile Charger so we don't even get to deal one damage. Maul could be good, so I guess we'll play Hallow Blade, which is more likely to survive, and then the next turn maybe equip Maul of the Skyclaves. Yeah, opponent's got the same start. Ooh, Blade Master. So, I think I still like Equip Maul and the next turn just Blade Master for double strike. We'll have to take a little bit of damage here, but that's okay. So, I get to hit for 5, next turn I get to hit for 10. And then Kazul Shuri could end the game. So hopefully no Skyclave Apparition here for Hello Blade. Alright, no double white. Shadow Spear opponent's gonna try and race here with Lifelink, which, you know, could work, but the double strike's gonna make it more difficult. And I get to play both creatures out. And still have a card in hand to discard in case they try and kill Hollow Blade. Although, I guess my opponent has a Shadow Spear which can remove Indestructible, so if they have a 2 mana removal spell they could activate Shadow Spear and then kill Hollow Blade. Sample to scry one. Now of course they could still kill Hallowblade in my turn at instant speed just to force me to tap it so it doesn't actually connect. Although we do have other avenues to victory. So just an intimidator. Opponent deciding whether they even want to attack but they kind of have to, otherwise they're dead to the Hello Blade. But our opponent's between a rock and a hard place here. For one mana, I don't think there's anything that can go too wrong. So we'll take four. And next turn we can attack and Kazul's Fury, if needed. Can use the Intimidator to turn the opposing Intimidator into a coward, which I'm sure it doesn't really appreciate. So let's do that. And swing for defenses. All right, GG's. Sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing a Giruda Doom of Depths deck. This hand's not really keepable without white mana, I don't think. I guess I get to play Intimidator plus Intimidator, eventually Ember Cleave. But if we don't find white mana, it just doesn't do enough. All right, this is better. So, Hello Blade into Maul into Blade Master. We've had this curve before, and it worked out pretty well for us, so I'm going to try it again.
turn one island. So opponent's gonna have some ramp as we see turn two pixie. Yeah, let's go with the Hallow Blade. A Lotus Cobra. So, opponent's gonna fetch and essentially have access to three mana thanks to Landfall. So they could put Giruda in hand, which they could then cast next turn. So yeah, that's an explosive start. We're just gonna try and ignore all the ground creatures and hope that we can fly over for the win. Shadow Spear is also gonna make it difficult for the opponent to race. So we'll see what Giruda can find here. They hit a Questing Beast, which is probably going to be their pick. So we take six. So here we have to decide between Shadow Spear Equip to gain life or Blade Master to hit a bit harder. If I play Blade Master hit for 10, then my opponent's cracking back for 14, although I can block the Cobra just fine. If they have removal, that's bad. So, close call. I mean, I guess I can jump with Intimidator too if needed, so... Yeah, I guess we'll wait on the Shadow Spear and then the Surprise Trample could maybe make the difference trampling over the Pixie. Intimidator can also prevent Pixie from blocking next turn, which could come up. So I really just need to survive and make sure I still have a 5-powered Hello Blade in play. So 6 mana for Kogla, which can fight and kill the Blade Master. So we're taking 10, but opponent's just dead in the air next turn. And our opponent explodes, awesome. So yeah, Mall of the Skyclaves put in a ton of work, especially alongside Core Blade Master. It's a very lethal duo, so it goes to show that you don't always need a ton of cards to win a game of magic. Sometimes a creature plus an equipment is all you need. So overall, what do we think of red-white warriors in standard? Capable of winning games quickly, especially with the double strike combo, but can also play a slightly longer grindier game, relying more on the card advantage from Akiri and or 4 drops Legion Angel, Nahiri and Winota as we've seen against a blue-black rogues deck. So it's not a bad choice in standard and it's also poised to get a few new additions in Kaldheim. So looking forward to the new set, we've got Usher of the Fallen as a 1 mana to 1 spirit warrior that can make more warriors with a boast ability, so that can give the deck an additional 1 drop to make it more aggressively slanted. We've got Cole the Forge Master, a 2 mana to 2 legendary dwarf warrior that also rewards us for having equipment. And finally Halvar, God of Battle, the dual-faced god that can either be a 4-4 creature that lets us equip stuff for free, giving our equipped creatures double strike, or we can play it as a legendary equipment, which gives the equipped creature plus 2 plus 0 so and vigilance, and when it dies it also returns to our hand. So plenty of new toys in the next expansion here to try out in our Red White Warriors build. But for now, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.